Hi everyone, and welcome to this session, Decision Management on Red Hat OpenShift. My name is Matteo, and during this uh, short but demo intensive session, we're going to see how we can develop, deploy, and expose cloud-based decision services using Red Hat Decision Manager. To set the context for this session, I have highlighted this quote is from a report of 4.1 Research, and I'm not going to read it, but it explains in great detail how cloud native application development is really now at the core for the digital transformation strategy. This is because cloud architecture together with container and microservice technology are a foundational element that allow us to quickly assemble logic, automate process, and therefore adapt the application uh, to the different uh, requirements uh, and changes. In this context, we have Red Hat Decision Manager version 7, formerly known as Red Hat JBoss BRMS. It provides a business rule management system and a rule engine based on tools. Uh, you can build different kinds of uh, decision services, automation with that, and also you can also build, for instance, complex event processing application. It also includes the business optimizer for constraint resolution problem that is based on OptaPlanner. And the Red Hat Decision Manager, together with the Red Hat Process Automation Manager for Business Process and Management BPMN, I think it encompasses in a great uh, example uh, in the, for the context that I've highlighted with the code just before. This is because these applications are really available to you, of course, on a premise solution, but as well on private cloud and public cloud that is basically OpenShift, and we're going to see that through the demo. All of this because it's based on container technologies. So I don't have uh, too much time to go into details of the feature of uh, Red Hat Decision Manager Release 7. There are a few, however, that I would like to highlight. First of all is uh, container and microservice readiness. So these are, uh, of course, we, we built on a foundation of the previous releases, but as well, we made it even more easily now to deploy an OpenShift and flexible uh, to align with different kind of uh, microservices architecture. With the V7, we are including a execution engine for the EMN, the decision model and notation standard. We're going to see that through the demo. For what concerning business optimizer that will be auto planner, there, are, uh, there has been in, uh, improvement in the scalability for even larger optimization problems such as vehicle routing, shift assignment processing, and so on. So these are, will benefit for this kind of large scale problem. And also there has been an improvement in the fit and finish uh, of the workbench decision center, so the authoring tools for a better appealing end-to-end -end capabilities aligning with different kind of uh, end users and personas. As I said, I don't have too much time to go into details of the feature and, uh, and describe the, the solution, but one thing that I would like to highlight is an example architecture as we're seeing in this one. So, we are going to see how we can author, deploy, and expose decision services uh, using Red Hat Decision Manager and all of these on the OpenShift platform. Red Hat Decision Manager is composed of several components. Uh, one of them is Decision Central. Uh, it's a workbench that provides tools for developers, but even more importantly for business experts to collaborate and define their decision logic, define their, their rules that will become assets that are the core of the application. Now, these role assets can get deployed uh, to Red Hat Decision Manager decision servers. And here is uh, where the benefit of being on the OpenShift platform really shines, because being on the OpenShift platform, we can really scale out, scale horizontally as many decision services we like in order to serve uh, even more increase in demand for the end application. This end application can consume then these uh, decision services and can be really different kind of application, mobile application and user application, or even web client application that are also themselves hosted in OpenShift. So this is going to be the, the purpose of the demo. We are going to use a decision center for altering the tool on OpenShift. We are going to expose the decision services on the decision server, and this will get consumed by the web client app still, open, uh, still hosted in OpenShift. Let's just let's jump into that. Here I have my OpenShift um, cluster console. And when you start, for instance, this demo, you have the components here. Here is the decision central. Here is where we're going to author the rule asset. The key server is what is providing the actually decision service logic uh, exposed. And here is the client application. Let's jump into that so that you get an idea what it's about. This example application is for requesting a login. So I can enter here my uh, some example data. 
So let's say that uh, this person is requesting a loan, uh, the age, the credit score, and the current income for an amount of loan of 10,000 euro for seven years. When I click the, the apply button, what is happening is that this application is consuming a decision service that is available uh, on the key server. And this decision service currently is calculating for me that the loan is approved and uh, it has sufficient credit score, what is the current interest rate and the monthly repayment for the loan. Now, let's uh, suppose that the business analyst now is evaluating this behavior and it finds out that the, there, is, uh, there is something to be corrected. For instance, let's say that the policy of the bank is that uh, the request of a loan cannot start at 18 year old, but may, must be at least 18, um, sorry, 21 year old. So how can this be done? Well, the business analyst can actually connect to Decision Central. In the Decision Central, I'm going to open this project that is providing the decision service logic. It is this application. And as you can see, it's uh, composed of several uh, assets. Some of them are more technical for developer-oriented people. And uh, some of them, however, are really business-friendly for business analysts and domain experts. One such example, uh, we're going to see this kind of uh, assets during the demo today. So one, this uh, asset is the guided rule with DSL. And this is a, a way to have a construct that allow me to use a DSL-like approach to define the logic of my rules, of my decision logic. As you can see, it resem I have several constructs that I can add. I can choose different kind of uh, constraint that needs to be matched, or later, if it is for the execution, I can choose other type of action that I want to perform when the constraints are met. As you can see, it resembles a form. In this case, I can simply change the constraint of the data. So we're going to say, okay, the applicant must be now at least 21 year old. And as we can see, one of the action is that the message to be reported back is that otherwise the, the applicant is uh, too young. Okay, so I can save this asset. And now here is uh, where different business units may have different policies, but from a technical point of view, it's always a matter of just bumping, for instance, in this case, the minor version of the application and clicking the button build and deploy. It can be either the business analyst or an admin role. It depends really on the role organization that the, that the business unit would like to apply. As you can see, I just matter of clicking a button. What happened is that this uh, decision service logic has been reprovisioned to the, um, to the key server. So if I go back now to my end users application and I click the button and apply, okay, the, the application is, uh, is rejected. I can, uh, I can now click 21, uh, update to 21 year old. And now the, the logic of the application is behaving now, I guess, as we expect. Let's, uh, let's go even further. So let's say that now we realize that the, the amount is, uh, is not uh, within the, the constraint of, uh, of our decision service logic that we want, simply because the amount is uh, too low. Here is an opportunity for me to show another kind of, uh, of rule asset. This is the guided decision tables. The guided decision table is a visual construct that uh, enable us to define a set of constraints. These are the columns that you see here on the left. They define ranges or certain conditions that must be met. And on the rightmost uh, columns, I have the action. So what I want to perform in the case that uh, the, the range is not met. So for instance, one is that if the range is between a certain threshold, I'm going to reject the, the loan request because the amount is either too high or too low. So what I can do is that I can really change uh, the constraint here and I'm going to bump them to the what actually I really want. That is at least the, the low request might be at least uh, 50,000 euro. Okay, so I've updated the, the decision table. It's again, a matter of clicking save. I can go back, change the minor version. Here I do it for trackability purpose. So um, change the, the logic and now click in button build and deploy. Okay, so now the decision service will have been reprovisioned. So if I try to enter again with the same data, I get it rejected because now the amount is matching the constraint for too low. If I update that and let's say that I go to 65K, 
then again the loan is approved and there are other here the the, the decision service uh, logic is really uh, articulated between different kind of assets uh, one of them I, I don't have too much time to go into into the detail of it but is uh, with um, with uh, uh, an Excel uh, files and so you can define as well for those uh, those scenarios where the business has already defined a lot of their decision logic already in an Excel file, this can be really easily adapted to, to match again with the visual construct that we've seen before. So it can be used really as an effective way uh, to provide the decision logic. I hope that this uh, shows a good uh, demonstration of a um, technical of a decision service scenario using really different kind of, uh, of, uh, of rule assets. I'm going to move now to another uh, demo uh, that will show you how we can have a simple decision service deployed to the cloud with DMN, Decision Model Notation Standard. DMN is, uh, for those of you who may not know, is a relatively new standard by OMG, the same organization that is uh, behind BPMN. So if you think that BPMN is for processes, what DMN is trying to do is that is uh, is really trying to uh, bridge the gap between the definition of the decision logic and decision rules and the actual execution. Like BPMN, so DMN is trying to do that with a visual standard. So it's a very visual friendly notation for business analysts and domain experts. And it's composed of several constructs. One of them is the one that you're seeing on the screen right now. So this is a, the decision requirement graph, and it shows the dependency on how your decision logic, your decision structure is decomposed. I have uh, the round boxes. These represent the input of my, of my model. In this example, we want to calculate the monthly fee for an account. And to do so, we need to rely on two inputs, the account holder information, that will be information of the account holder, such as if it's employed or not, what is the age, and so on, and the account balance itself. The account balance itself can be because when we move uh, up to a certain threshold, we're going to profile the account with a, with a specific profile. And these are really my sub-decisions that will compose to the big, uh, the big final decision in this case that is going to be the monthly fee. So I can use this graph and the, uh, the edges that connects this, uh, this decision, they are represented by the boxes, to represent how my decision logic is decomposed. Behind these boxes, as we've seen, we can put the, as we're going to see, we uh, can define the decision logic. So for instance, this is the decision that I say, how I want to profile my, this account. It's again a decision table. The amend defines a visual standard for decision tables. It's very similar to the one that we seen just before. Again, we're going to have one uh, one rule per sorry one rule one row per rule. On the leftmost columns, we have the different kind of constraints, and on the right hand side, we got the actions. In this case, it will be the the output result that we want to say. And in this case, we're going to say if the account uh, trash, if the account balance is above one million euro, in this case, right? No, sorry, one uh, one hundred thousand euro is going to be premium account. Similarly, for if I go back, is that if the account holder is the input to define a sub decision of exemptions, this because in this simplistic example. I design such that the, the state law mandates that uh, if the account holder, for instance, is not employed, then uh, it's going to be exempted for the monthly fee. This is because of some law. So what is great about the MN is also the standard defines the execution semantics. So you can the author uh, the DMN uh, model with any editor you'd like, and as long as it's compliant, then it's going to execute just fine. Also on, re on compliant DMN execution engine, we had read out, we define we provide to you a um, fully compliant DMN execution engine, 100% supporting the standard. Here in this case, I've authorized the DMN model with the excellent uh, modeling seed by Transitec. And what I can do, what I want to show you is that how we can use a decision manager in order to quickly provision a decision service with that. So how can I do so? Well, in this case, I connect to, to Decision Central and here I'm going to hit a project. I'm going to create a new one simply because I want to show you how really if you install the, the, the application, uh, the demo on, on your machine, you can start. So 
when, we were, when I was talking about the fit and finish of the workbench and decision center before, is that uh, here is one example. It guides you visually on what will be the next step. So when you start the decision um, uh, manager, you will see some uh, some helpful tips. For instance, here is suggesting me, do you want to import a project or some samples? In this case, I'm going to start a new project, fees application. So I'm creating a new project. This is uh, how you would start the, the demos on your on your laptop, for instance. Mm -hmm. Now it's proposing me, okay, now you can get started by defining some of the rule assets we see in the decision table, or in the case that I want to import my file. Okay, I'm entering the DMN file that I've authored with, the, with that tool. I've imported that. And what I can do here is now I have my project. I click the button build and deploy, and this is automatically being provisioned to a key server. How we can interact, how we can consume this uh, decision service. I'm going to show you two examples. One is uh, for uh, a JVM based developer. We provide a simple API. You just need to provide the URL endpoint of the server, a few configuration, and then you would have uh, a simple API for interacting with the DMN. In this case, I'm uh, providing the input data. As we remind, we have two inputs, the call the information, in this case, I'm saying the agent employed in, okay, status, together as well with the account balance. So if I run this application, uh, so here, I get back the result. So the evaluation, I said, okay, it has classified the, um, the account profiling as a standard profile. The exemption has no exemption to be uh, eligible for, and the monthly fee therefore is 50 euro. 50 euro. If instead I'm going to change that, for instance, and I say that my account holder is not employed, I can execute again my decision service, and in this case, the exemption evaluation will have evaluated as accepted and therefore the monthly fee uh, to be applied is zero. Because all of this is based on REST API, I'm going to show an example where I have the equivalent JSON payload uh, that I sent before. So again, here, I think it's even more simpler to see. These are the two inputs that I have, my account holder information, my account balance. I can send this information. So I send this payload and as we can see again, this is pretty consistent. It has calculated the monthly fee as 50 and for a standard uh, exemption and standard account profiling. If instead I change that and I make this, uh, this account balance for a very rich person, I can send this data again. And in this case, the sub decision for account profiling has evaluated to premium and therefore the monthly fee at zero. Unfortunately, due to the time constraint of the session today, I really wish I had more time to show you in uh, in more details about the feature of the of the product. Uh, but I hope that this is uh, this is quite a good uh, overview for you to get an idea on how you can use a, a decision manager. Uh, let me leave you with a few references. So, if you want to know about uh, know more about the Red Hat Decision Manager version seven. Here is a link together also with the demos that are really based on this uh, that I've shown you today. If you want to know more about uh, the DMN, the Decision Model Orientation Standard, uh, here are a few a few more links and a couple of videos. Sorry for the plug, but uh, also here you will see more details. I go into more uh, explanation about how you can compose DMN models and execute it on the Decision Manager. Allow me to just make a shout out to my colleagues that helped me to prepare the demo today, and I thank you all for your attention.